when I make a decision, I am terrible for actually listening to anything to do with my gut instinct. I don't know, I sort of just dismiss it. Like, okay, let's be analytical. Let's think logically here. But should I be going with my gut a bit more? I wanted to look into actually what a gut instinct is. So that is what I'm gonna be doing in this video. I think gut instincts have a bit of a woo-woo reputation. It's like, it's this magic thing or almost like something else is guiding you towards a choice. First things first, the gut instinct is not magic. It is not magic, it is just another form of thinking. In the brain, it's been described that we have two different forms of thinking. There is our slow analytical type of thinking, and that is when you take in all the different factors when you are trying to make a choice. So you could be trying to see if you wanna move house, and this would mean taking in all of the actual figures, numbers, data, you know, is that price worth it? Is the location good? You put all the things together, and based on that data, you come up with and answer. The other form of thinking is what is called fast thinking. Fast thinking is a way for our brain to come to a snap decision about what to do. This is so important for making decisions in the moment when we're in an emergency. So if you hear a loud bang, then you've got to make a snap decision about should I run towards it, run away from it, go and investigate it. And this fast thinking is essentially the gut instinct, it is that initial, okay, this feels right, this feels wrong, this is what I should do, this is what I shouldn't do, in that instant, it's very, very important. But these two things are not separate in a way, like I think both of them would happen at the same time. For every decision you are faced with, you will have that snap, yes or no. It's just whether you should go with that snap, yes or no, which is the question. I think something else about the gut instinct that is often a misconception is because it is quick, it's simple. It's actually not simple, it is really, really complex. It's taken on board a ton of information and giving you a simple answer of yes and no. So maybe the answer itself it comes up with is simple, but the way it gets to that answer is Definitely not. And this is because the gut instinct relies on pattern recognition. So our brain detects patterns. So when you're in a certain situation, the brain will log different points of that situation, put it together, and then come to a conclusion about whether that situation was good, bad, ugly. And that is essentially saved in the brain in terms of it is able to be accessed later on. So when you're in a situation, or you might meet a person, and it just feels right. What that rightness comes from is the brain in that situation will have picked up on patterns that you have maybe experienced previously that have felt good. So the brain is going, ah, that person, the way they smile, that smile is exactly like me mum's, me dad's smile. And the smile itself is essentially a pattern that the brain has picked up and said, that's good. And it's thought that when something feels right or something feels wrong, this is when there is a significant pattern match or pattern mismatch. So if you are seeing someone who has the same sense of humour as your best friend, you might instantly feel like you recognise the sense of humour, your brain is recognising it. So it feels right just chatting to them, you know how to respond to them, you can sort of be you can have predictable behaviours around them. If you meet someone whose sense of humour is exactly like your ex-partner, that may then feel wrong because you might then be associating that match of pattern with some negative experiences. Or you could be in a situation where you are speaking to someone and their sense of humour is completely alien to you and that would then be a mismatch of pattern. The brain hasn't come across that sense of humour before. And so you don't really know how to act in that situation and it can lead you feeling a bit like, ooh, something's off here. Do they not like me? I don't get it. I feel like that was me when I moved to university because where I come from, everyone has a very similar sense of humour and my brain just could not get its head around people not having that sense of humour. Like I'm used to getting on the bus with a bus driver and having a full on joke. And I tried to do that in London and it went down like a sack of shit. And what is really interesting about the gut instinct is that it is 
subconscious it isn't something that we can necessarily put our finger on and i think a really interesting way that scientists have shown this is using a card game called the iowa gambling game this is where you have four piles of cards and in two of the piles you will have big wins but also big losses so overall in those cards if you keep picking from them you end up with a net loss the other two piles have small wins but smaller losses so overall you end up with a bigger win, a smaller loss. It's very hard to come to that conclusion without looking through loads of these cards. But what tends to happen is after about 40 cards or so, turning them over, you will naturally start to go for those more advantageous, small wins, but smaller losses decks. Consciously, you can't really explain why you're going for them. But if you measure a participant's sweat on their hand or their heart rate, when they start to go for the decks that have the higher losses, their sweat goes up, their heart rate changes. The body is essentially signaling, don't go for that pile, go for the other pile. And that is because the brain has recognized the pattern of there's more losses in that pile that are bigger and there's less in that pile that are bigger. And even though we don't know it ourselves, the brain has recognized it on a subconscious level and is sending signals down to the body. It's that sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight response. That is what changes your heart rate, how much you sweat, and it alters your digestive mobility. So that is potentially why we do have this thing which feels like it's in our gut. It's that the subconscious processing of the brain picking up different patterns, then sends signals down to the physical elements of the body. Sweat, heart rate, stomach. But a bad thing about the gut instinct is because it is quick, even though it's taken in a lot of information to come to that yes, no decision, it is prone to errors. And this especially comes down to cognitive biases. Cognitive biases are essentially described as mental shortcuts. It's a way for the brain to very quickly understand a situation, which can be good in emergency scenarios, but in more complex situations, these mental shortcuts can actually be pretty dangerous, I think. Some of those patterns that the brain is recognizing will be via these cognitive biases, via these mental shortcuts. So the weighting of the yes and no can massively be swayed by information which is inaccurate, information which is damaging, information that is actually suboptimal in terms of the choice you end up making. There are so many cognitive biases. For example, there is the halo effect. So that is the first bit of information a person gives you when you meet them for the first time, that initial impression massively sways your overall impression of them later. So if you have that good first impression or they come out into an interview, say you're interviewing someone and they come in and they absolutely wow you in the first question, the rest of the interview could be average, but because your brain has captured that initial impression as this person is amazing, then for the rest of the interview, you might not be marking them as fairly. There is also confirmation bias, which again, I think is really important in thinking about gut instincts because confirmation bias is when we will be drawn to information that confirms our belief systems to us and tend to ignore other things that may be just as important or more important that we need to take into account. And then one of the most detrimental cognitive biases is stereotyping and that is again the brain wants to make a quick decision about whether the situation it's in is good or bad and so what it tends to do is put people into boxes based on certain characteristics so if you have a certain accent and if that accent is perceived as being working class or perceived as being very very upper class and you have an interaction with someone, straight away they could be putting you into a box of, oh my God, they are like someone I would never hang around with. Either way, so because of our gut instinct acting so quickly, these cognitive biases are incorporated into that very simple yes or no answer that we end up feeling at the end of the very complex processing that happens quite quickly. Situations in which gut instincts can be good is when situations are familiar because the brain is recognizing patterns in these situations. And then based on those patterns, it is giving you guidance about which way to go. If you are in a very familiar situation, then the patterns in which you are experiencing in that situation or something that you have come up against in the past. So it's more likely that your brain is gonna have an optimal answer 
for those certain patterns. This has been shown in experimental setups and one was where they showed individuals designer handbags that were fake and that were real. And they found that if they showed these designer handbags to experts versus non-experts and just says, go with your gut and say, which one is fake, which is real. The experts in that snap decision were able to say which handbags were fake and which ones were real. 20% more than the non-expert. But then on the flip side of that, it means in less familiar situations, gut instincts are less accurate. So if you are faced with this designer handbag situation again, and you're not an expert and you're told which ones are fake, which ones are real, it's much, much harder for the brain to pick up on maybe some of the nuances in the bag's design that could say that's counterfeit and that is real. It's almost like if you had a picture and of that picture, only a tiny bit was shown, like Catchphrase, the TV show. When you have a tiny bit of the picture shown, it's very hard to deduce what the whole picture is saying. If you saw in this picture a face that looked terrified, your brain would probably recognize that pattern as fearful, this is bad, this is bad, oh my God. But then if you revealed the whole picture, it could be that this person is sat on a ride at a fun fair. So yeah, there is some fear in there, but it is more of an exciting and nice experience. So if a situation is unfamiliar, then the brain still tries to give you an instant yes or no answer. It will always try and do that. But the information that it's relying on is much more scarce, much less optimal. And so the answer you get is less likely to be accurate. It's thought though that gut instincts can be really useful for really, really complex snap decisions. And this is again, because the gut instinct can take in a lot of information, a lot more than the analytical mind can. So if you have loads and loads of factors, then it's gonna be really beneficial to be analytical about them and go through them. But if someone says to you, okay, you have to make a choice now based on all these factors and make this really complex decision, the gut instinct can potentially be more useful than trying to weigh up all these different analytics in a very condensed space of time. Because with all of this information, it can lead to overthinking, which is a downside potentially of the analytical mind. I mean, overthinking can be Good in some instances if you really do have a big decision to make, but also overthinking can be inhibiting when you are trying to make a choice. You can just go round and round and round and round and round and round and round in circles and you don't get anywhere because you're like, okay, I am overwhelmed with all of this information. There was one review study that looked at experiments where people were asked to pick an apartment based on either information or on more of a gut instinct. So they found that when people were given really accurate information about the apartment, using analytical thinking was better because you could come to a better conclusion by looking at all that data. But if the information was suboptimal, then it was better to have a period of distraction and then pick. So it's almost like you got given some information, you sort of didn't really think about it that much and then you chose. That was better than going over and over again the information that wasn't that great. So in real life, I mean, these situations maybe wouldn't come up so much because you'd like to think you would have a lot of good, accurate information. But it is almost saying that if you have a really complex problem and there's lots of things to think about, it can be useful to take a bit of time away from it, which I think we all see in our lives, take a bit of time away. And that space can allow the subconscious processing of all those different bits of data and detail to come together to give you a uh, idea out of the blue. A final thing that I think to be aware of with the gut instinct is that we can be led by it and then use our analytical brain to justify our decision. This is seen a lot in moral dilemmas. So if someone is given a problem which is quite challenging morally to solve, their gut instinct can tell them do this or do that and they'll do it and afterwards when they're asked why did you do that their analytical mind will think of a reason for what they just did it might be that yes that person's smile reminds you of a person that you used to be in love with and that could be why you're drawn to them but it might not necessarily be in your awareness that it is because of 
that smile, it's almost like the brain has picked up that shape and been like, that shape is good, go for that. We just like to know that we have had some onus in our choice. And because of confirmation bias, it is very easy to justify our gut instincts with opinions that prove us to be right and wrong. And again, in a lot of these situations where people have gone with their gut and it feels right, and they say later on, I made the best decision, that again is maybe down to confirmation bias because we like to say that what we did was right. So maybe it wasn't the best decision, there could have been a better one, but because we've made it and we felt in the moment like it was right, we then want to prove to ourselves like it's right. So should the gut instinct be trusted? I think it shouldn't be ignored because what it is essentially doing is, okay, through all of your past experiences, this situation feels right and this situation feels wrong. It is giving you an overall guidance based on what you already know. And I think a good way to tap into that gut instinct is to do some very quick decision-making exercises. I have a video about how to make decisions and in that I talk a little bit about flipping a coin. So if you have a big choice in front of you, like should I take that new job? If you say, okay, heads is yes, tails is no, flip it and see what the answer is. If it's yes, how do you feel? If it's no, how do you feel? And straight away register. That is a good way to see the gut instinct that you might have about a situation. It could be highlighting familiarities below your subconscious. So things that you might not necessarily be picking up on. If you go for a job interview and you just feel something's a bit off, it could be because the person interviewing you has something about them that you can't really detect, but your brain is picking up that, okay, in the past when we've interacted with that before, it's not been good. So it can be good in that situation, but I think it's also important to think about the familiarity and unfamiliarity of the situation you're in, because that can massively influence how accurate the gut instinct is. I think for me, because of this familiarity aspect, when I feel like something is good or something is bad, it's almost like a guide for what will be good for me right now based on what I have experienced. So if I'm facing a situation and I just feel like, oh God, that's not right. You know, if you go into a team at work and it just doesn't feel right, that's probably because either I haven't been in a team like that before and just don't know how I would fit in, or I have been in a team like that before and I just know I didn't fit in. That's also quite hard if you're going into something completely new because you just don't have that accurate information. I definitely think it is a combination. It's a combination, so when I'm making a choice, taking that gut instinct into account, but also like unpicking that a little bit as to, okay, why do I feel like this is right for me? Is it that I'm really excited by the work? Is it that the people are great? Is it this, is it that? Unpicking that a little bit and then using the analytical. Like imagine if a boss of a company just walked into a room and said, okay, I'm firing you, you, you and you based on my gut instinct. You'd be like, what? It is not optimal to just use that alone. So I think let's marry them together. It's a combination of both. And if my gut feels something is right and something is wrong, I'm now not gonna ignore that. I'm just gonna unpick it a bit more and say, okay, is this based on some cognitive bias? Is this based on a past experience, which is actually, yes, you are, you are giving me what I wanna hear. All of these things, unpicking it a bit more, using the analytical thinking, and then coming to a conclusion. Right, that's it from me this week. If you like things about the brain, human behavior, productivity studying, all of those things, then subscribe to the channel. More videos will be coming your way and I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.